two times a week, a Boeing 737 operated by Buzz Airlines takes off from Warsaw's Modlin Airport. It's headed towards Tenerife South, full of Polish tourists eager to reach the warm, sunny shores of the Canary Islands. Now, you might not know this, but Buzz is a Ryanair subsidiary, meaning this twice-weekly flight represents the longest one in all of Ryanair's network. The journey has a scheduled flight time of nearly six hours, pushing the limits of the Boeing 737 that flies it. But do you know what also takes about six hours? A journey from Ryanair's home base in Dublin to either New York or Boston. And yet, Ryanair has never once tried to compete on these routes. That might seem odd. Ryanair has proved time and time again that its business model can induce demand and deliver profits on pretty much any route it touches. So it begs the question, why doesn't Ryanair fly transatlantic? Why doesn't Ryanair fly to America? Let me explain. Real quick guys, my goal for 2022 is to hit 100,000 subscribers. I'm getting close, but there's definitely still a ways to go. So whether you watch all of my videos and just haven't gotten around to subscribing yet, or you're new to the channel and just love great aviation content, it would mean the world to me if you went ahead and subscribed. Thanks. Now, I know most of you probably already know how Ryanair works, but I think it's important that we quickly dissect their operating model. The word Ryanair might as well be a synonym for cheap fares. The average ticket price for a Ryanair flight in 2019 was just 37 euros. It doesn't matter what time of year you're flying, where you're flying, or when you decide to book, low fares remain their modus operandi. Their fares are always cheap. But despite this, they remain incredibly profitable. Again, Ryanair's average ticket price was 37 euros prior to COVID, but that was far from their only revenue source. Ryanair has its passengers subsidize these low fares by paying for pretty much everything else on board, snacks, carry-ons, etc. And this generates an additional 17 euros per passenger. When you consider its average operating cost per passenger is 47 euros, you can quickly determine the airline turns a 7 euro profit per passenger, equating to about a 13% profit margin. For the aviation industry, that's a really good number. Now, the mastermind behind this whole operation is a man named Michael O'Leary. He's been their CEO for 27 years and is very respected inside the company. Pretty much whatever he says goes, and he's gotten away with saying and doing some pretty outlandish stuff that, if I repeated, might just get me demonetized. So in economy, it'll be very cheap fare, say 10 euros, and in business class, it'll be beds and jobs. <laughs> but despite the respect that he commands, a 2018 biography revealed that Ryanair's board outright dismissed his calls to fly to America, even though he did so with much enthusiasm and vigor. Rarely ever does the board refuse his ideas or directives, let alone doing so in a public forum. So there must be a good reason why they chose to do so here. Well, we can start to find answers in a statement that Mr. O'Leary made back in 2017. In an interview with Aviation International News, he said, unless you're going to serve both the East Coast and the West Coast with a low cost model, you don't have the scale or ability to penetrate that market properly. You see, the sheer scale of Ryanair's operations, the extent of its route network, the number of planes it flies, and the size of its employee base has been instrumental in keeping its costs low. And if they hope to replicate that kind of scale in the American market, they need to serve a lot of major cities. But there are really only two locations that they can feasibly fly to with their current aircraft, New York and Boston. While these cities do see a lot of transatlantic demand, they're also slot restricted and extremely competitive. 
As such, it's unlikely that Ryanair could achieve sufficient scale if they only flew to these two destinations. But hold on a second, didn't Goal fly a 737 MAX between Brasilia and Miami back in 2018? And isn't that an 8 hour journey? With that kind of range, Ryanair should be able to push much deeper into American territory, serving cities like Philadelphia, DC, and Detroit. So what gives? Well, simply put, Ryanair 737s are not like most 737s. They're dense, with the Irish carrier packing in as many seats as regulators will allow. And they're only getting denser. While a typical 737 MAX 8 holds about 170 passengers, Ryanair's new 737 MAX 8200s, which are the same size as the MAX 8, will seat about 200 each. On top of that, Ryanair sure has a knack of keeping these aircraft full. In 2019, they achieved an average load factor of 96%, which led the industry. While these extra seats have a positive impact on Ryanair's bottom line, they have a negative impact on the distance the planes can fly. Heavier planes burn fuel more quickly, meaning those aforementioned cities can't be reached. So if Ryanair wants to push deeper into the American market, they're going to have to do one of two things. Option one, they could look outside the 737 family for longer range jets. This is exactly what Norwegian did when they broke into the long haul, low cost space by picking up a handful of 787s. And this strategy actually worked fairly well for them before COVID-19 hit. But Ryanair isn't likely to pursue this option. You see, Michael O'Leary has proven a master negotiator, snatching up aircraft for cheap. This innate skill helps the carrier maintain low fixed costs, and it's notable that they ordered many of their 737 MAXs during the plane's grounding, helping them secure a great deal. But O'Leary has lamented that the Gulf carriers and their quote, record lunatic orders prevent similar tactics when purchasing wide bodies. And even if they could secure efficient wide bodies for cheap, they'd probably still refrain. Fleet commonality has proven a very important tool for Ryanair, and buying wide bodies would disrupt that. Ryanair's second option includes taking a subset of their incoming 737 MAXs and just removing a whole bunch of seats. Like I just mentioned, the calculus is simple. Make your planes lighter and they can fly further. But this too would be disruptive. Ryanair's existing planes all have roughly the same capacity, meaning they're interchangeable, able to fly any route at any time. Throwing lower density planes in the mix could complicate route planning. Now, Ryanair could try to combat this by only flying these planes to America. But since long haul international flights don't typically operate on short turnarounds, these jets would spend a lot more time on the ground, decreasing their utility. Now these are certainly big obstacles, and one might even say that they're insurmountable. But here's the thing, Ryanair has done the impossible more than once in the past, a lot of it thanks to their leader, Michael O'Leary. O'Leary is one shrewd dude, and if you listen to him speak, he's always thinking 10 steps ahead. He has a gift of being able to look at the aviation market from a million different angles. So yes, as it stands today, it doesn't seem Ryanair has a path towards American dominance. But should we see another big shock to the industry, much like what happened during COVID, don't be surprised if Ryanair makes a move. And don't be surprised if O'Leary goes around telling everybody that he told you so. Seriously guys, as a huge aviation fan, listening to Michael O'Leary is almost spellbinding. I highly, highly recommend that you go check out some of his recent interviews. And let me know down in the comments if you would want me to do a video specifically on him and maybe some other aviation legends like Herb Keller and David Nealman. Thank you so much to my patrons for making this video possible. If you want to join the Patreon community and help this channel to grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.